So, Bobby, it's like deja vu all over again. Can you believe it? We did it! We are somebody! Repeat, repeat, repeat. We are the champions, <laughs> my friend. Anyway, that's terrible. Oh, congratulations! Well, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> congratulations to you, too. Uh, we're we're going to talk about all of that that we're referring to coming up on the Middle Class VO podcast. If you need e learning, we're just an email away. Corporate narration, tell us what to say. Explain a video, imaging radio, sling and local cars, read an IVR. No, we ain't no stars. This is the Middle Class VO podcast. The Middle Class VO podcast. Oh, yes. Uh, the end of the year is here. Sova's time, the Voice Arts Award just happened. And uh, Bobby Maxwell, who is in Cincinnati, and Kevin Kilpatrick here in Nashville are so excited and pleased and humbled that we uh, we won. We won, Bobby. Yeah, picked up best podcast again two years running yeah now we you can know, have... check it check and stacy are going to come back <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> now we can af- af- officially say, say we're the defending champs because uh we've yes. defended it and, and and we do this podcast out of love um as of this hot minute we don't make any money off it as a matter of fact it costs us time and money so uh you know maybe someday we'll figure out a way that you know we could at least recoup some of the expenses but as of now now it's just a labor of love and that that's hopefully what uh, everybody's getting from it bobby is just love for the industry love for our fellow voice actors love for our fellow human beings and being able to contribute something and uh, help them along their career journey as we've been helped a lot by other people yeah our followers can continue to go up, so you know, let somebody know, share the podcast, and because um, everybody that mentions it to us is they they learn something, even if it's you know, just a, a humor humorous story that we've you know passed along from something that we did that they should look out for. But yeah, we appreciate any new followers and um, listeners that we can get. I'll tell you what, the uh, the awards streaming online were quite different than a year ago. Um, I don't know about you, but I had on my sweatpants and a sweatshirt. I had my feet up on my table down here in the studio. <laughs> I was eating I was eating pretzels with crab dip. <laughs> nice. Fancy. <laughs> because we weren't on camera this time. Or we weren't, you know, they just it was just a stream, but uh, they did a great job. Well, Bobby, tell me about uh, Rudy it because and, and Joe. Let, let me I'll just I I had already had plans to watch Die Hard as I do at least once or twice every Christmas season. So I was knee deep in watching that. And then all of a sudden my, my phone starts blowing up with texts and messages and, you know, alerts and, <laughs> and from various social media. But tell me about the format and, and, and tell me how it went down, Bobby. Well, it, they, they actually had a studio in New York forget the New York something something studios and they had um, Joan and Rudy and they were all decked out and they had presenters and they actually had entertainment they had a vocalist who was incredible I'll have to figure out her name again because she was awesome she did um she did Chicago with a, a backup singer and a dancer mm-hmm. and um, later on she did um, Oh, I can't remember what the, the other song was, but I, I was just blown away. I was like, "Good job, Rudy and Joan, and getting her." But um, yeah, and then they, uh, uh, I think maybe five awards. They actually had um, a Zoom screen where they had all the nominees up, and then they would announce it live, and then go to them, and they do their their um, their thank yous. But other than that, they would just show the nominees, and then the presenter would announce the winner, and they would in, in some places play like when you won for best radio commercial um they actually played your commercial which was wonderful Uh, was that through an agent yeah uh yeah yeah okay yeah because i um who was the girl that was on it with you you know oh my and, and that is horrible i need to know who that is um i need to find out who my uh, cracker barrel wife was um i got i got my real <laughs> wife deborah and then i got my work wife bobby and then i need my cracker barrel wife i, I i'm not sure who that <laughs> is you need to find out we, who she is. <laughs> the we did our parts 
totally different times, totally different situations. So I did not even get to meet her within a session. So I honestly don't know who it is, but I, I do need to track her down. I'm sure I could uh, find out who that is, though. You know, there's one thing. I, I remember you telling me when you auditioned for that. I don't know if you had just come off some um, coaching or something, but you said you just let it out there. You just, you know... You just kind of did your thing and and didn't hold back and and look what happened. Not only did you get the the gig, but you got an award for it. Yeah. So it, congrats. It, thank you. And you know, I do have to give credit to coaching. Um, I've had uh, some great coaches that I have worked with, and I, I don't want to leave anybody out, but I do want to mention Tom Pinto. I've worked with Dave Walsh. I've worked with J. Michael Collins. And I've worked with Mary Lynn Wisner. I've done some work with all of them. Mary Lynn, uh, I, I've probably done the most work with, and I was actually doing work with Mary Lynn at the time that I auditioned and, and got that gig. And, and yeah, it was all about that, you know, that spot. It was, I was playing a, not really a henpecked husband, but a husband, you know, who clearly he and his wife, you know, they always have the debates, you know, on, you know, who's doing what better and this, that. And I'm like, well, you know, that's my life. So I, I was able to tap into that. And, and the care, the spot screamed for me to just make it Kevin and make it me and put my own touches mm-hmm. on it and all that stuff. And when I did the audition, that's what I did. I just, you know, it was... I put myself in the grocery store having debate with my wife over what cheese we're getting. So, you know, I was able to put myself <laughs> well, into that. Why don't we that. play it right now? <laughs> let, let everybody who didn't get to hear it, hear it on our podcast right now. Did you choose this cheese? I did choose that cheese. You want to check out this choice of cheese? Are you challenging my cheese choice? I was hoping you'd be a bit choosier with your cheese choices. What cheese did you choose? I chose this cheese, Cracker Barrel Black Ribbon Slices. It's the choicest cheese chosen by the choosiest cheese choosers from the places in America that champion cheese. Your cheese choice is a choosier choice than my cheese choice. Uh... Do you want paper or plastic? Hmm, another challenging choice at the checkout. Cracker Barrel Black Ribbon Slices. Cheese wisely. Well, there you go, Bobby. And so, and there was a, a great kid there at the end you heard. And he's like, do you want paper or plastic? And just <laughs> added to the spot. And yeah, I, I've got to find out that actor uh, who's in that with me. I know it's terrible that I don't know by now, but I will figure that out. And because uh, she totally added. And it's funny that, you know, it, it's we were there together. You, it, you felt like it anyway, I hope. Right, right. I When I did a Charles Schwab um, commercial last Christmas, uh, last month, which was a TV commercial, and I didn't know who my my uh, cohort was on it. It was actually, and he's a voice artist, but he also acts on camera. And when somebody replied on Facebook, "Hey, great spot, I saw it," and and um, also mentioned him, I'm going like, "See, you don't you don't get to meet those people, you know? <laughs> you know, they're they're recording at a different time." Oh, it was great too. They were running that like crazy during the elections, Bobby. I think it was on CNN. I was seeing it a lot. Um, yeah, but they ran it uh, during a football game, and I got calls from all over the the country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great. But you, could, it was totally Bobby, totally Bobby. But um, you know, great spot, great stuff, and it, it's it's been a great 2020 in spite of everything that's going on. I, that's another thing I wanted to talk about. You know, how great 2020 has been in spite of how much 2020 has sucked. It has been great. (laughs) You know, we're we're blessed to be able to do what we do. And I know that's cliche. I know that's trite. But we really are. I mean, you know, we're not doing we're doing something that so many people would love to be doing. And so we have a lot to be thankful for. That's get worthy. We really do. Um, we, We talked about this a couple episodes ago about how. When COVID hit, we were like, oh, no, especially because we both do so much automotive. And, and yeah, that did drop substantially, but other areas picked up and you just run with it. You, you know, I think it was Jay Michael that said, you know, make sure you diversify in this business because, um, well, I'm sure a lot of other people have said it, but I just remember him saying, make sure that all your eggs aren't in one basket because you never know what genres are going to get hot and what might get cold and and just just have, you know, have those talents to, to pull from. Yeah, 100%. And a uh, lot to be thankful for in 2020, you know. And, and, you know, the awards are just the icing on the cake. And they... They help uh, put a little bit of brightness in a uh, what was otherwise 
kind of a gloomy year uh, in, in a lot of respects, uh, personally and work-wise. And hey, we had George Lucas and Mark Hamill, by the way. I know. And that, you know, uh, <laughs> Mark Hamill, who, you know, brilliant actor and just a brilliant, brilliant voice actor. And you just, it's amazing all the work that he has done. But yeah, he was also uh, featured at the uh, awards, the Silvis Awards with the Lifetime Achievement Award. And that was really neat. And then George Lucas showing up. And, you know, how cool is that? It was really, really cool. It was a great award, I'm telling you, that for what they had to deal with, with, you know, just no audience. And, you know, you had you had the quiet moments when normally we'd be cheering or, um, you know, they'd have effects or whatever. But overall, it, it was really good. And they, they mixed it up really well with the um, audiobook um, categories and all the the uh, Spanish categories, and I really like that. And it went it went really fast. Well, I think maybe because we talk a lot when, when we're at the live awards, <laughs> yes. so it like doubles the time. I was just thinking about that. I was thinking, uh, recalling back to 2019, and I think it was right around four hours, maybe something like that. And how at long? At least. Yeah, yeah. And how long? Yeah, it might have been four hours and a half. But how long about did it run on uh, Sunday night? I want to say it was about three, maybe. Still. Because they get a little (laughs) bit of a late start. Um, Maybe two and a half. Okay. But, yeah, but um, it it went, you know, just like that. Yeah. They had the... uh, you know the, the the little inserts with the icon award for Mike uh, Mark Hamill and um, some other little um, roles of, of of special acknowledgments, but overall it was like went one right after the other, and the presenters were really good. I have to hand it to them. Yeah, the Society of Voice Arts and Sciences Awards held Sunday night, and Bobby Bobby was able to watch them. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, I was watching Die Hard. One of my favorite Christmas movies of all time. I can't believe you watch that every year. Yeah, and it is a Christmas movie. Thank you very much. But Bobby, did anything? Um, were there any surprises uh, in the awards? That you, like anything that stood out? Um, surprises? No, I wouldn't say there were any surprises. I, you know what gets me is it, it speaks for this the voiceover community is that every year I I know more and more people who win. And that's because you just become close, you know, when you go to the conferences and such. So mm-hmm. it was great to see, you know, when you won and when Krista Walwick won and Bridget and Chris McCloy and everybody, you know, you're like, I could see us last yeah. year, like we were in the stands, Christy won. So it's great that, that it's for us as performers and friends, it's shrinking so that we know more and more people. I mean, I knew a lot of the, the Spanish um, nominees too. Mm-hmm. Which one was incredible. It was a, a dubbing um, award, and I'm trying to think what her name was. Uh, it was for um, for Bombshell, the movie, mm-hmm. and it was so good. And, and she was it was a, a Spanish award, but if you if you can somehow get it, it was amazing. I mean, she was right on um, Margot. Um, what's her name? Margot Mar- Margo. Kid- Kidder. No. No, not Mark. No, 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 That's no, the old one. Uh, Mark, <laughs> the old one, not the old one, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Jeez, Cal. I know. Mark. I know. <laughs> that is horrible. <laughs> yeah, because I want to watch that, the English version. Have you seen the English version of that? The English version? Or Well, the Bombshell, the movie. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Margot Robbie. Thank you. Good thing <laughs> for listening. <laughs> Oy vey. But yeah. I know. <laughs> Margot Kidder. Margot Kidder is a le- legendary actor, though, in her own right. Own right. Wasn't Margot Kidder on Indiana Jones? I'm not, I th- maybe something like that. I was thinking Superman. I'm not sure. Did you sure. see they're doing another Indiana Jones, by the way? Not to, <laughs> I'm jumping all over here. <laughs> really? Yes, I just saw it the other day. No, I did not. It's like, know. that's crazy. God bless him. Uh, yeah, Margot Kidder, Canadian American actress, director, and activist. Um,. She... I thought she was on the one with the snakes. Um, is that her on that? Um, Maybe I'm wrong. Early life, films and television. Which <laughs> I, I'm reading down. I pulled up her Wikipedia. I need her IMDb. 
Um, oh. Margot Kidder biography. Um, what is she known for? Known for. That's uh, usually the thing. Ba ba ba. Born in the Northwest Territories. No. I could have sworn that that it was her. Superman. Maybe. Superman. Okay. Yeah. Indiana Jones. Superman. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. But, um, yeah, she's done a ton of stuff. Would you like me to read her bio? I mean, we'll be here a while. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> we can move right along. <laughs> Interesting tidbit. In the original Superman in 1978, she made, for that film, $110,000. Oh my goodness! Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's a that's a pittance nowadays. Um, yeah, I wonder what that would. Extra- you know, we talk about um, how 2020 has been, for the most part, pretty good for us. Um, can you imagine on screen actors, the hits they've taken in the past year? Yeah, that is something to think about. And it, you saw the Tom Cruise rant to his to his cast, didn't you? Or I didn't his, uh, see crew. that. I heard about it. Tell oh, me about it. I heard about it. You've got to pull it up. You've got to pull it up. Um, yeah, they're 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 filming uh, Mission Impossible in London, I think it is, and he is all about having a safe environment because he doesn't want to shut the shut the uh, the set down again. Mm-hmm. And. Um, there were a couple people that were standing too close to each other. I think they had masks, but they were just too close. And he, he always <laughs> said six feet apart, six feet apart. And um, somebody caught video of him just going off on them about, you know, I mean, he was like screaming. Hang it's on, like, we're Bobby, not me, shutting this down. Let me, let me see if I can play this. I think I got it. You're back here in Hollywood making movies right now because of us. Because they believe in us and what we're doing. I'm on the phone with every studio at night, insurance companies, producers, and they're looking at us and using us to make their movies. We are creating thousands of jobs, you Ooh. Oh my God. I don't ever want to see it again. Oh. Ever. Wow. And if you don't do it, you're fired. And if I see you do it again, you're gone. Tom's a little hot. Can you imagine? <laughs> Maybe that's why he's been divorced several times. <laughs> I don't ever, I don't ever want to say it again. <laughs> Man. Poor Nicole. Oh, yeah. And poor Katie, uh, Katie Holmes. Like, she seems so shy and bashful anyway. I know. Man, oh, man. Yeah, that, w- that was crazy. You know, I, I'm right there with him and people wearing their masks, but man, he <laughs> went off. And I guess a couple people quit right after that, too. Oh, wow. That is something. Yeah. Crazy stuff. But it has been a wild and wacky year, and, you know, the end of it culminates with us winning uh, the Voice Arts Award for uh, Outstanding Podcast once again. And just so thankful to have that. And, we have so much doing the podcast, much so much fun doing the podcast. Bobby, what does your 2021 look like? What kind of plans do you have? What ways are you going to attack your voiceover career in 2021, etc.? Well, I was just talking to my husband Steve about this yesterday and you know, have I've had kind of a down week just be, by choice. It's the holidays, and I um mm. I said, you know what? I think I might retire in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> did, 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 did smoke come out his, of his that ears? That was his reaction. <laughs> like, yeah, that the was Yosemite his reaction. Sam reaction. He's like, psh, psh, psh. <laughs> you will never retire, and he's right. Can't can't you just imagine being ninety and still doing this? Oh, I, I can. can. That's the thing is what yeah. what we do, we can do it until we have no breath left left in us. I mean, mm-hmm. that's what's so great about this career choice is that yeah, you know, people, you know, some people are forced to retire because of the physicality of their work, and we have a limited amount of physicality in our work, but nothing like most people. And as long as we're able to read and you know, our our voices gain texture over the years and it makes them more interesting right. to listen to and that gives automatic credibility to a lot of reads. So we're lucky well, to be able to do it. The only problem I would think is that 
if I were going to be able to go down the steps to my studio here. <laughs> We need to get you one, get of, one those, of those lift master. Yeah, a lift master <laughs> lift that master. mounts to the wall. It goes up and <laughs> <laughs> I have the dog on my lap. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, I forgot my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> back down. <laughs> or back up. <laughs> Got my coffee. Back down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it would so have to be that way. Oh, that's so funny. But no, as far as 2021... I think I think we did this in December uh, last year. Um, I have to I have to rely more on marketing. I'm just such a bad marketer. Let's have a, a, a marketing guru on the on the podcast in yeah. January. We uh, let's discuss that off mic because I've got a couple that I would like to try to get on, and I know you probably do as well. And there's. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a couple folks that in particular that I would like to reach out to. So let's let's discuss that and see where uh, your thoughts are and my thoughts are, and we'll see if they coalesce. Okay. But yeah, and, and what do you what do you think? What 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 do you want to hone in on in twenty twenty one? You know, uh, twenty twenty, Bobby. Like we're just you mentioned it last year about this time. We're talking about this same thing, and I said I, I wanted to make sure I got some good coaching in, and I did. I'm I'm so happy with the coaching I did, and I'm going to do more. Um, I've laid off of coaching the last few months, but I'm going to pick it back up um, because I want to be fresh and uh, ready to go for the new year and. Keep those skills sharp and, you know, find out more tactics on uh, nailing auditions and, you know, getting auditions. And I've learned some stuff over the last year on stuff that I have landed that I'm like, oh, my gosh, people have been beating that into my head that this is a tip and a trick that helps you land auditions. And, you know, I want to share that myself, too. So I'm going to get some more coaching. We can talk about all that stuff, but definitely coaching and the marketing, I'm going to, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say I'm going to do a lot of marketing because I'm just going to, I don't want to lie because <laughs> I just, <laughs> I want to get my website, I want to refresh my website. I want to give it a good once over and get that. So my my goals for 2021 is make sure and get my new website up and running and have that doing some marketing on its own in the background and while I'm auditioning and then uh, some training and coaching. And so, yeah. And then later on in the year, Bobby, you and I are going to have some announcements to make. Uh, hopefully, if our world is such that we're able to travel and to go places and be in person in places, Bobby and I have uh, some exciting things in the works that uh, we will share with everybody as the, the months progress. Yeah. So you you are taking us to Italy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> in my wish jet, I wish I had a jet. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you meant? <laughs> Oh, man. But I, I do miss being, you know, hanging out with people and, and just sharing ideas and sharing stories and, and thoughts and, you know, marketing ideas and, and tips and tricks. I, I miss that in-person connection with fellow voice actors. How about you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was just talking to my daughter about that. I said that of everything, it's that that person to person contact, that human touch. And it's it's so important because you know you, you can we're we're already in a booth by ourselves for a living you know talking for a living and then to just have to you know have your spouse as the person you see 24/7 I'm not putting down Deborah or Steve I'm just saying right, you know no, we, yeah. you need you need to to be out there and and interacting with people and I'm just you know praying that this vaccine can take care of all that and we can get back to to normal because just need it for our health. We really do. Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. Well, Bobby, you stay well. You keep crushing it like you do. Congratulations. And, and thank you for being my partner in all this and going on this podcast journey with me. I couldn't do it without you, Bobby. I mean that seriously. <laughs> so I, sincere. <laughs> I seriously appreciate you, and I appreciate everything you do for this little show of ours. And uh, couldn't do it without you, kid. Yeah, congratulations to you on the podcast and your your Radio Spot Award. Woohoo! Thank you, and um, look forward to uh, talking to you in 2021. 
on the Middle Class VO Podcast. Remember that we're everywhere. You can find us on Podbean. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on um, Instagram. We're just everywhere. Wherever you get your podcasts. (laughs) Yes. The Middle Class VO Podcast is a K2 Media Productions production. All views and opinions expressed are those of the hosts and guests. The McVob Jingle was written and produced by Kevin. Co-produced and performed by Chloe Dolandis. Additional engineering by Zach Zimmett. Bobby's Hair and Makeup by Rebecca Adlita. Kevin's Wardrobe by Slippery Pete's Fashion Emporium. All previous episodes are available for download on Podbean. For the Middle Class VO Podcast, I'm Tracy Thibodeau. I'm Lisa Lou Perry. Thanks for listening. And don't miss the next episode of The Middle Class VO Podcast. The Middle Class VO Podcast.